Are you excited for the upcoming Thunderbolts movie? Well, we have a list of books in the month of September that are heating up and even cooling down. Welcome back, Gainers, to another incredible, exciting, fantastic episode of Comic Game oh. If you're new to the show, I'm Adam. I'm Zach, and this is Princess Royal Highness, looking very low today, just like usual. She's doing the princess wave. You do it too. Bow down, respect, and of course, where is she? Oh, oh there she is. Here's the Coco. Dancing Coco. Dancing Coco. Yeah. Uh, guys, we got an exciting episode for you today. This is our that time of the month where the Gaines crew gets together and we bring out the drop list. You know, those comics that were hot a year ago and are not now. Is that how we do it? Yes. Is that how things roll? The bleeding season. Bleeding season? Yes. I don't want to know anything about the bleeding no, season. No, you don't. You don't. Uh, <laughs> on a different note, okay. uh, recently the Thunderbolts trailer was dropped. The very, I think it's the first one we've gotten so far mm -hmm. for the movie that's coming out in 2025. So it's a ways away. But uh, this was a movie that I don't think very many people have been excited about over the last like couple of years. And this new trailer but now. Was, now? Yeah. It was just really, really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, would that be a good time? Because last year, a lot of the, the books that had to do with the characters that were going to be on the Thunderbolts team were heating up. Things were getting spicy. Some character announcements were being made. Who was going to be in the movie? And uh, now with this first trailer, we wanted to see which of those books has gone up in price and even dropped. So this is actually like a dropped or not list because some of the books did go up and uh, some of them did drop. Some of them did drop. Yes. Right? So Absolutely. before we get in to said drop or not list, we need to pop something else. Yeah, pop some bottles. And I'm really thirsty right now. So I don't just want one type of drink, two type of drink, but three. It's a triple ginger brew, sparkling beverage. I don't even know if that even makes sense. Wait, and what does it make sense? I don't know. It's a triple. What? How is it a triple? Is it just because it's three ginger, times a the brew flavor. and sparkling? Uh, three kinds of flavors. Maybe they just three put three drinks ginger. into one. All right, this is what it looks like. And let's see. They got this. Oh, no. This I is not it's... something you want to shake. I feel like we've okay, done this okay, before. Okay, okay, okay. Let me. Did you shake it? Mm. That's like shaking a soda. We good? Okay, okay, yeah, we're good. I was like, huh. I'm like thinking about it. Like, uh, it's reusable, too. Hmm. So that's pretty nice. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. That's a weird one. It's almost like a, a ki not not kimchi, but that uh, kimchi. It's not, well, it's the same. It's, it's kind of like kombucha. Kombucha. Dude, kombucha not, and kimchi. I know it's like... not the same, but I believe both of them are fermented. Yeah. Like every... you know what is yeah. not fermented? Hanging out with us um, on whatnot. whatnot every weekend, guys. Pretty much every weekend now, but. If you want to pop a bottle with us this weekend, specifically, we're celebrating our 5K follower celebration, which is going to be epic. We have two massive slabs we're going to be giving away. First, Eternals woo, is going to be on the list, as well as the Killing Joke, full slab. So we just got done last week with the Princess's 7K, so come hang out with us for our 5K. Princess will be on right after as well, so it's going to be an epic night. Come join us. Yeah. All right. Let's get ready. The upcoming Thunderbolts movie. So, uh, just a little, uh, you know, backstory in case you're unfamiliar with who the Thunderbolts are and uh, what the drop list is. Like two years ago at the D23 Expo, which Disney gets together and chit chats about all the upcoming things, uh, they announced that they were putting together the Thunderbolts movie and like kind of a lot of the cast that was going on, mm -hmm. who was going to be in it. And uh, that was in September, so technically two years ago, drop list. And uh, things started to get hot, and the Thunderbolts are kind of like the Avengers, but sort of like the anti-hero team. So we've seen all these characters in other movies, most of them not as the star of the movie. Actually, I think all of them not as the star of the movie. Mm. And now we're going to see them all come together to uh, form a team to stop something from happening. Basically, just like the Avengers, you know? Right. They all got their just like solo movie, and then they're like coming together to have their own, so... I think it's a good idea. A lot of people are really excited about this and all the different options and people that could be in it and how it was working out. We even had like Val 
who is sort of like the the Nick Fury character who was running into all these characters at the end of their movies would be like, hey, you should join the Thunderbolts-ish. I don't know if she ever actually used the word Thunderbolts, but her team, you know, her secret team that was going on. Yeah, yeah. And I like the ratio of uh, men to women on there. Yeah, you know? yeah. Maybe all of them will, you know, you know, you know, go on dates after that. You know, daddy issues, who knows? I think two of them are related. Loosely. Yeah, loosely related. <laughs> but uh, the Thunderbolts is a real team that took place in Marvel Comics, obviously. And uh, it was sort of a similar thing. It's like at that period when there was no superheroes, they put together like sort of a fake superhero team where they're like, hey, we're the heroes. We're here to like save everybody. But I think secretly they were kind of evil. I don't think that's way the way this is going to go, the movie, where they're going to, like, all secretly be evil. It just needs to be, like, questionably morals. Questionable morals. Yeah. You know? Questionable morals. I like that. Like, yeah. an- anti-hero stats. They're willing to yeah. kill people. Yeah. And I just have to, like, save For them a cause. All the time. Yeah. You know? For a good cause. I don't care how many good and innocent people have to kill to get American peace. American yeah. peace? Yeah. I, I, I don't think any of them care about American peace. That oh, honestly. yeah, that's pretty Maybe. true. Yeah. Maybe. But it'll be interesting. Um, I, you know, with everything going on and all the cancellations, movies that got canceled with, with Marvel and the whole Kang thing going to the wayside and them taking like this newer path, which has been sort of like the Fantastic Four and maybe even like the X-Men path. Uh, I think a lot of people was like, this movie might be part of like the bad regime of marvel you know when things were kind of a little bit sour so and like they maybe they have too much invested in it to cancel it but as we go through this list we may find that maybe the big wigs at marvel took a different path that we're all might be happy with hopefully i think so unless that's uh too confusing it made sense to me all right let's get into the list uh, this is an extra special because you guys have all been good normally we do five books on the drop list but this week we got seven because there's seven characters in the Thunderbolts. Um, we have every member of the team plus a bonus one. So, And the bonus one will be right off the bat. And if you guys don't know how we do this, uh, Zach checks on the sales from this past year. And then checks to see if the most recent sales have gone up against mm-hmm. the uh, sales from a year ago. And that will kind of give you an idea whether or not you should get in these books. And there's some of these what we might have... Let you know we think these are like good investment books in the future, or maybe they're just like terrible, right? Mm, they yeah. could be. They're all first appearances, but they could be terrible. It could be terrible. Terrible. All right. Let's get into it. Number seven on the list. The first book to talk about. The Century. Issue number one. The good year of 2000. And this is Jay Lee and Paul Jenkins getting together to do this book. Beautiful Jay Lee cover. Uh, I actually, I really like Jay Lee's covers. I'm not a huge fan of his like interior artwork. I mean, I may be, I may be in the minority on that, but from the, some of the stuff I, I've read, it doesn't always, the panels don't always work out right. That may just be me. I know he's a good artist, but um, you know how it goes. Mm. This book is famous because it is the first appearance of the century, also known as Bob Reynolds. And it's also the first appearance of The Void. And The Void's really important because... It has everything to do with who the Sentry is. He's a really cool character. Um, he's he's basically in the storyline. He's an OG character, so he's been around since like the beginning, since like Spider Man and the Fantastic Four first showed up. And he was doing a bunch of things to influence the other characters and to help them. And he's he's a Superman type character that has the power of a million exploding suns. I'm not really quite sure how you quantify that, but that's what they say: a million exploding suns. I feel like that's way more, right? Yeah. Than it should be. Yeah. He should be, like, all-powerful yeah. at that point. And somewhere back in the history of Marvel, before we all knew what was going on, he realized that there was this evil version of himself called the Void. And, like, when he shows up and does something really nice, then he kind of turns into the Void, and the Void does something really evil. And the Sentry was like, this is pretty bad, and I don't have any way of controlling this, so the only way for me to do this is to erase my memory and erase everyone else's memory that I ever existed. So that way, like, I can't be the Sentry anymore and save anybody, but it will also get rid of the Void. So mm-hmm. it's kind of a big sacrifice, and so that's why nobody remembers that he was ever around. And okay. the story kind of is like, is like him kind of coming back. So it's like they find this guy and the Bob Reynolds is this overweight sort of dude that like 
doesn't know who he is, obviously, because he doesn't even know he is a sentry. And then him relearning, like, that he used to be this, like, really cool superhero from back in the day. And obviously, it, it, with the sentry returning, it also brings back the void and all the nasty stuff that comes with that. Um, it's a great series, good read. Um, they were able to transition the character into some more stuff. Bendis was able to put him in the uh, Avengers team that he mm. put together, which is one of the more popular Avengers teams over the last 20 years. And uh, he was cool in that. He's also had a couple other miniseries after that. So definitely worth checking out. Um, the big deal, why are we talking about Sentry? He's never really been part of the Thunderbolts. But he may or may not be the main villain of the movie. And when I say that, he's not really a villain either. But the Void could be the villain. Uh, is how this is working out. There was a lot of speculation that Steven Yoon from The Walking Dead Invincible was going to play him. That would be I, cool. Yeah, there was, I thought that was like almost going to happen for sure, and then everything kind of fell out, and I'm not really sure exactly why it fell out, but it, it caused a big jump for the book, and a lot of people got excited about it. Um, we know for sure now that Lewis Pullman is playing uh, the character, which it should be equally as good. He's been in a few things, most notably recently is uh, Top Gun Maverick, so he's mm. in the Top Gun Maverick movie, and he's also famous for being Bill Pullman's son. So, like, the president of uh, in Independence Day, you know, like, I will not go quietly into that. This is his son. They look really similar. Um, but it, it's a it's a cool book, exciting. Uh, I think this might be the right time to bring Century in, and it could be really, really fun. Uh, as of note, uh, I always do it. Usually, I try to do a bowler report. There is a 1 in 50 R.D. Rosen uh, version of this book and the San Diego Comic-Con, also done by Jay Lee which is limited to 2,000 copies. Both of those uh, don't hold a flame to this book. This is the good one that you want to get, which is crazy. The 1 in 50 sucks compared to this one. And mm. the cover does suck. <laughs> At least in my opinion. Hard. Get into it, though. Yeah. Drop or not. Uh, actually, gained in price. Uh, price a year ago was 261. And now it's taken off into the stratosphere at 360 for 9.8. It's a very volatile book. It's been sold as little as $99. For a 9.8? For a 9.8. To as high, that might have been just an outlier, to as high as 405. Average sales 276. There's 1,691 total graded. 583 of them are 9.8 universal. That's about 35% of them. Okay. So it's. Pretty high in comparison to uh, total graded. It's that it's not that sweet twenty percent spot that you want twenty percent lower. I I do think this book has a little bit of legs. It's a very very great book. It's a modern book, so only time will tell. This is gonna be one of those big iconic classes. Obviously, people like the Sentry and they want more of him. Or so century. there's a good chance. There's a good chance. Do I think you should buy it now? Raw. Preferably, because I think there's a premium right now for the 9 eights. Yeah. So you might want to wait until a little bit after the movie. Yeah, this kind of, yeah, this will basically make or break it. If he's really cool and the movie is good, this book could live on as, like, a great key. If the movie tanks and it sucks um, and they don't really use Sentry again, it may kind of drop down into, like, a much more affordable book. So it depends on if you don't care about that and you just like the, the comic book version, you know, then mm -hmm. go and snatch it. But, yeah. Only time will tell for this one. The next one, maybe time is already told. No, I don't think so. Captain America 354. This is a returning book to the drop list. It's gone on a big roller coaster over the past like four mm -hmm. or five years. 1989, Karen Dwyer, Kieran Dwyer, and Mark Greenwald. Not names we hear too often, but fantastic cover. This is the first full appearance and cover of john walker as u.s agent and this one is one of those books that gets very confusing because there are a lot of john walker keys and it's hard to know like which one you should go after and why there's so many of them um the people have spoken and this is the book you should probably go after as the main key i have a soft spot for all these books in the late 80s that like smash the title you know, like Thor 337 and like Punisher where they're like, God, like take that title of the book. Mm -hmm. But if you're wondering about the other ones that go along with it, you have Captain America 323, which is that really cool border cover that has regular Captain America's face on it. That's the first appearance of John Walker. So just plain old John Walker. Then you have Captain America 333. 
And uh, that's the one where you have like the Captain America costume that's empty on it. That's the first appearance of John Walker as Captain America. Mm. And that's, that's why it gets kind of confusing. So he's already at that point been in the comics, but that's when they hire him as Captain America, just like in the TV show. He shows up first as Cap. And then an issue, Captain America 337, you have the first appearance of U.S. Agent, but that's Steve Rogers in the U.S. Agent costume. Okay. Which is a cool book, too. It's also kind of homages like the that first appearance of Captain America, or in the Silver Age. Oh, okay. Or the, uh, the Avengers cover. Oh, okay. Avengers okay. 4. So then you get this one, which is John Walker as the U.S. Agent. So we've already had... John Walker, we've already had U.S. Agent. Then you put them together, and you get them. It seems like he just wanted to like, copy whatever Steve Rogers was doing. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, probably. No, I want to be Captain America. Oh, no, now I want to be U.S. Agent. Yeah. I'm surprised he was never, uh, what, did, didn't Steve Rogers like, dress up as Nomad one time? And then, probably, yeah. Um, did that guy do Nomad? He should have. He probably did, actually. <laughs> copier. But, uh. Yeah, so it's it's kind of it's a cool book. It's nice that there's a bunch of keys that go with it. It may shrink the value of this one a little bit because when they have to like share the money a little bit over the other books, I feel like that sometimes is the case. Um, yeah, I mean, if you don't know anything about John Walker, he's kind of a dick. So that's sort of like how he goes, and he is kind of that way in the TV show as well. And uh, if, if you were to compare him to anybody. He'd probably be like the Guy Gardner of the Marvel Universe. That'd be my best, you know, Guy Gardner. Yeah. Same thing. You know, he's kind of the dick of the Green Lantern. Superstar. Right? Uh, so, show, movie. We've already seen him. Uh, he was uh, played by Wyatt Russell. And uh, he, ha he has powers now. So, he did take the Super Soldier Serum. And mm -hmm. Wyatt Russell uh, did a really good job. I liked him as the character. Um, he's also the son of Kurt Russell. So, there's like a theme of famous people's sons playing superheroes mm -hmm. in this movie. And uh, we did get to see him in the Falcon and the Winter TV show, and he did a good job. Mm -hmm. Like as I mean, everything kind of worked out. It wasn't like my favorite uh, Marvel show so far, but I did not hate it at yeah. the same time. It wasn't too bad. Plenty of bad ones, and that one was a pretty decent one. So we'll see. He's gonna be in the show. He's gonna be in the movie. Uh, out of most of the characters in it, I'm like semi excited about him, but like not the most. Mm. Not the most. Way more excited about Sentry. Exactly. Well, let's talk about price. Price a year ago for a CGC 9.8. He's busting through the wall, busting through the title at $261 for a CGC 9.8. Now he's fisting the wall <laughs> straight through it at $293. It's like the same thing. You got 179 is the low in the entire year. To the high is 298 Average sale is 230 there's 949 total graded, 93 of them are 9.8. That's about 10%, about the 10%, and that's the sweet spot for total graded. So, iconic cover, awesome, hard to get in high grade. Key appearance, U.S. Agent. U.S. Agent wasn't really, like, the most popular character in the world, but now you're probably going to have a little bit more popularity. It's probably going to be coming apart uh, it's probably gonna be like one of those books if you want to get all the cool Captain America keys this would be for sure one of them you know you can't afford most people can't afford the golden age ones but this will be like the one that you want to get in that run if you want you know you know you obviously you want to get the strength covers you gotta get the first appearance of Falcon of course this is another book that you should get oh yeah and love it forever that's how you get to see. Yeah, I think it's a great book. I think it's uh, for sure a buy, but again, maybe wait until the after the movie comes out. Give it a couple months, but I think this will be a great iconic modern book to get because time has already spoken. Yeah, it'll be nice in this movie to see him in a different light because I don't think the actor did a bad job in any way, but like he wasn't portrayed to be uh, a character you like. You know what I mean? In, mm -hmm. in the TV show, so it's not like everyone's like. Oh, I really need to get that U.S. agent key because I really liked him in the show. Which he was cool. It's just kind of it's like liking Joffrey in Game of Thrones. Like the actor did a good job, but you just don't like that character at the same time. You know what I mean? Let's get his action figure. I love Joffrey. Yeah, that's the exact thing. Like who's collecting the Joffrey action figures? Yeah, exactly. the, the sad king. The exactly. Not, not, not so not so <laughs> great king. All right, guys. Let's get into it. Number five on the list. We, we got to talk about another villain, pseudo-villain. We got Iron Man 
219 1987 Bob Layton and David Michelinie uh, doing on this book. And this is an interesting one. This this one has uh, kind of similarities to another book that may show up on the list. First appearance of the ghost, who uh, is like an IT slash hacker guy. And even as far as I could tell to this day, is unnamed. Like he doesn't, no one actually knows <laughs> who the ghost is in the comics. And uh, he was a real member of the Thunderbolts at a certain time. And after uh, his storyline progressed in the Iron Man book, he does become a bit of an anti-hero in the comics. So he does mm. kind of lean towards the good side every once in oh. a while, but is willing to kill people. Obviously, a huge difference between this ghost and the ghost in the movie is that uh, the ghost in the movie is a female. Gender bender. Yeah, so the one in the, in the comics is a male. And this is a... This is a, a choice that is really doesn't matter at all. Like, I think the uh, the character's name in the show was named uh, Ava Starr, and she's played by Hannah John Kamen. Did a really good job. I didn't think it mattered. I didn't need a, a male ghost that just, yeah, didn't matter to me at all. And that showed up in Ant-Man and the Wasp, which was a, a good movie. Pretty good. Yeah, He's... a good movie. Not the Ant-Man Quantumania, but the yeah, second one. Not as good as the first one, but the second one was pretty good. And, and they did a good job with her story because the... The ghost character is not really that drawn out in the comics um, as they did in the show. So they made her like the daughter of Egghead, who's a popular villain for Ant-Man. And then they also mixed in Goliath in there and had him kind of be like her mentor. And I think the story panned out really well. Um, she, they, you know, she wasn't like a very like, like evil person. She mm -hmm. was kind of like doing something to like protect herself and didn't really care who she hurt along the way to save her own self, which doesn't really make her bad. She just kind of didn't want to do that. And they gave her a little character redemption arc at the end. They're like, maybe she'll be back as a good, as a good character. And apparently she is. So uh, she's coming back again and uh, we'll see. I think she could be a fun addition to the group. I'm most excited to see her like have interaction with like Yelena Belova's character. Cause they're going to be the two most like female characters on the team that will probably actually talk to each other. So it'll be kind of fun to see how that works. And I don't know if we actually, she, she is officially cured, right? Didn't uh, the wasp like cure her? Yeah, like, I'm pretty or sure. Or the other wasp, the original one? Yeah. Not Hope, but Janet, like when she like shot her with the quantum powers. So it'll be cool. I don't know. It's not like never been a very expensive book. I think this is maybe the cheapest book on the list, right? Yeah, it's pretty cheap. Yeah. Well, no one was seeing them coming a year ago. You can, get a 9 .6. <laughs> no, there, you can get a 9.6. You can get 9.6 for forty nine dollars. Now you can pick up a seventy. There was an outlier at one fifty, but I'll tell you why we didn't add that in. The range is thirty six dollars to seventy dollars. Average sale is fifty six. In May, a nine point eight sold for a hundred and three dollars. So that's kind of weird. And there's only been two sales in like recent history. Of a 9.8, so it was like, eh, we can't really add the 9.8 prices. So. Which is crazy, because it's like a current MCU character that's going to come be pretty major in an upcoming movie. That's only two 9.8s were sold in the last year. Exactly. Strange. There's 603 total graded. 81 of them are 9.8s, which is about 13%. Oh. 147 of them is the 9.6, and that's about eight, uh, 24%. It's not an iconic cover. The character is pretty cool in a way. I mean, I kind of like the character in MCU. This one, I'm like, I don't eh. know. Eh. It's an okay Ghost character. Eh. I'm like, it's... she. she uh, that guy ain't no shadow cat, I'm just telling you. So, I mean, if you want to get this book, that's cool. I have no idea where this book would go. My get, My guess, I have an idea. My guess is this book's going to go in the toilet again. But... I don't know for sure. That's just my guess. So yeah. it's up to you guys. If you want it, get it. Got it. Good. It's a little bit of a conundrum. I feel like that low of a percentage at a 9.8 should be more. Yeah. And it's like old, but not that old. It's still 80s, but you know, compared to the other one, you'd think it'd be like a $200 book in a 9.8. It's just not a beloved character. It is not. All oh, oh. oh. All right. Next on the list, we do have a beloved character. We got Inhumans issue number five from 1999. Also, Jay Lee and Paul Jenkins. Surprisingly enough, same creative team behind the century. Uh, this is the first appearance of Yelena Belova, 
The White Widow. And there is a little bit of controversy when it comes to this book. It's sort of strange she shows up in this one and it's her mm-hmm. face is covered and you don't really get a good view of her. They do say her name, so they is officially her first appearance, but okay. she does doesn't really do much in the rest of the story and then doesn't show up again until Black Widow number one, which comes out in 1999. And uh, that's written by Devin Grayson and it's a quick mini series that really showcases her a little bit better and explains like where she comes from and we get the whole backstory on the Red Room. Surprisingly enough, like the whole Black Widow, Natasha Red Room thing was not a thing before Yelena came out and kind of mm-hmm. made it a little bit better. And uh, just a cool character overall, like a fun character. I feel like Marvel struggled a little bit to use her since her original debut. So they do have her on. She was a member of the Thunderbolts at a certain time in the comics, so that's all legit and really happened. But uh, she may be one of those characters that's cooler on screen than she is in the comics. Time will tell, um, you know, how that how that pans out. She could end up being cooler. But Florence Pugh is going to be reprising the role and playing her again. And uh, we've seen her in the Black Widow movie where she killed it. And we saw her in the Hawkeye TV show where she also killed it. If you guys didn't watch that the first time around, Christmas is coming up soon. Watch it then. It is one of the best Marvel TV shows that have come out easily. If if not the best one. It may be the best. I don't know. It may, it may be the best one. So check it out. Um, I mean, uh, most everyone that's in the cast so far, I would put her as the only one that's maybe a mega star compared to the other actors that are going to be in this movie. And I may be in the minority on that, but she has definitely been the star of quite a few movies that did very well in the box office. People respect her like acting... Uh, talents mm-hmm. to hold this movie down and uh, that might I think that's kind of why with this preview that came out everyone was kind of confused on who's gonna be the main character even though it's a team I still feel like one person should kind of be the overall like main character whereas like the Avengers were a full team but I still think like Iron Man was maybe ultimately the main character behind like all the Avengers maybe maybe cap with them but still Iron Man more more of a bigger character than said like Hawkeye or Hulk or anything like that who was like in the movie where uh, the new previews definitely show her as like the main character or at least a person we're following or like ride along character so uh, surprisingly enough though like Zach will probably get into this book has definitely had some problems over the years like keep holding its value um, and I think not because anything to do with her in the movies but because in in the movies Natasha Romanoff has left you know like Scarlett Johansson is basically gone and like I'm done with this so she's now been replaced with a newer character that never really happened in the comics like Natasha Romanoff is still around everybody loves Black Widow everyone wants why would you like have a comic about White Widow when you can have one about Black Widow and that's kind of like I think her issue in the comics until like they ever kill Black Widow which I feel like people will get really angry about that and like they just had a great run uh, Black Widow just had a really good run recently that everyone really liked. And there's a lot of cool stuff. And White Widow was in it, but as like a supporting character. Mm. And when you like can't hold down your own book, which I think they've tried a couple of times, your first appearance kind of wanes a little bit. Because mm. this book was really expensive and not so much anymore. And like I Princess showed earlier, if you're looking for another one to go after, uh, this is her first cover appearance. Significantly cheaper than the other one, but uh, both of them are much much more affordable than they used to be. Right, Zach? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, she had so many pockets a year ago. In a CDC 9.8, it was selling for $143. Now, she lost a couple pockets. Not too many. At $136. <laughs> Range is 104 to as high as 260 So, again, a very volatile book. Mm-hmm. Average sales 150 is about a 5% drop. There's 1,477 Total graded, 530 of them, which is surprising for a black cover, are 9.8s, universal. That's 36% of total graded. I think this will be a modern key. There's probably a newsstand of this, so I'd probably go after the newsstand. If you can get the newsstand, there might not be, but there should be. Yelena Belova is going to be an iconic character in the MCU, and eventually people are going to want her first appearance like crazy. So get it now. Get it cheap and get it signed by Jay Lee. Yeah. Or try to get it signed by Jay Lee. Yeah, it was crazy. He does great covers. His covers are like, 
awesome. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, worst case scenario, it drops down to a hundred. I don't think it's ever gonna go much under a hundred. And if it's signed, it's probably gonna have a premium price. So why the heck not get it for that? Yeah, you never know. Like that. This is yeah. This is the perfect one where you just don't know. Like if her character continues to do really well in the MCU, Marvel will be forced to do a mini series. And if they get somebody cool like Tom King to do like a six issue mini series on the white widow, which he's done really well with like Supergirl and wonder woman. Mm -hmm. uh, and he revitalizes it. Her first appearance will like skyrocket this, mm -hmm. especially yeah, if they can pull that off. So this exactly. may be a good one to go after. Mm -hmm. Speaking of good ones to go after, this may be the best book on the list. Might be I, like a, Maybe we'll have to spot argument to see which is the best book on the list. We got Avengers 196, 1980, number three, George Perez, David Michelini, who's been on the list already so far. This is the first full appearance of the Taskmaster. Amazing cover, too. Mm -hmm. Like, perfect cover, first appearance, front and center, spread eagle. Uh, also known as Tony Masters is his real name. Like, it's oh. like... I'm Tony Masters. Tony I might as well be the Taskmaster. If you don't know about the Taskmaster, his powers are everyone's powers, right? Ish. Mm -hmm. Fighting style. He can, like, watch someone else fight and then copy their fighting style. And famously, he did that with most of the Avengers. I think even in the comics, like, he watched them fight on TV before he even met them. So he could, like, copy Captain America or, like, Iron Fist mm -hmm. or... Even, like, Spider-Man. One of the only people he has a hard time copying is Deadpool, because Deadpool is so random that he, like, can't copy that. Mm -hmm. It's a cool fight together. But he has been a beloved character in Marvel Comics for a very long time. He was, like, the Deadpool before there was Deadpool. Mm -hmm. Like, he's he's a mercenary. He would... He's not really innately bad, although he'll kill people if he has to. He gets hired by rich people to do their dirty work for him and he doesn't care like what he has to do to get it done. He's not just going out there and like killing kids for no reason. Mm. So people kind of like him for that. And when he does it, he has got a lot to say. He's got like a, a big old mouth and he like talks a bunch of smack and he does a bunch of goofy stuff. And uh, he's been just used constantly because he works really well as a villain against anybody because he just matches. If you put him against Cap, he's a great villain. He's like, is equal. If you put him against Spider-Man, they're like equal. If you put him against whoever, I mean, besides like, like a cosmic being, right? But even then, sometimes he pulls it off. I don't know. You put put him against the Hulk. I don't think that's gonna end well for the Hulk. Yeah, Just you saying. never know. But we've seen oh, no, him. No, 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 won't end well for him. Not the Hulk would whoop his butt. My bad. Oh, he can make it. I don't think so. I said the wrong. I said the wrong way. What it won't end well for continue. the Hulk. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. he could. It won't end well for Taskmaster. So this one is a bit of a controversy because we did get to see him in the great Black Widow movie. I think Black Widow was really good, although I do agree that the villains were very weak. Um, there's a lot of things that saved that movie, but the villains kind of sucked. Uh, this character being one of them, not because they switched it. They could have had like a girl with a lab, which they did have a girl, uh, Olga. Karenko uh, did the role, and she's a like, good actress, very beautiful, Did like was in some Bond movies and some other things, and uh, they could have just had her with like a loud mouth, like talking smack to people the whole movie, but they they gave her the Deadpool Wolverine Origins treatment with the sewn mouth shut. It was like, why? It's like, you'll be in this movie, but you'll barely have a speaking role. Yeah. So but like, the, we need you to be creepy and scary, and it's like, I don't know, like... Like, they did a good job with that with Winter Soldier, and we'll get to that guy. But they didn't need to do it again with Taskmaster, you know? Like, they're like, just, I don't know. Like, it could have been a girl, and just gave her, like, a loud mouth, and just talked a bunch of smack Ooh. the whole time. It would have been awesome. So we'll see. They're bringing her back for the movie uh, on this one. I was kind of surprised with that one. They alluded Ooh. that that was going to happen. Uh, but she is coming back. If you watch the trailer, though... It seems like she's with the team in the beginning of the... At least it seems like when they're, like, meeting up. And then later on in the movie, when they're, like, in the elevator, she's not with the team. So I don't know if, like, they're going to use her to get killed off. Or if she's going to, like, get reprogrammed and turn against them. Um, there's a bunch of things. I mean, of all these characters, she obviously could easily be controlled by, like, like Val or any of them even more. You know, like, these all, other, everyone else could have free will except for her. So they could be like just reprogrammed her because basically that's how she was in the movie, hmm. which was weird too. 
Very cool. Well, a year ago, the task was to get this book, ideally the 9.8, for $900. Now, you can get the task is much easier at $731. Range six ninety drop to nine twelve. Average sales eight oh eight. It's a nineteen percent drop. There's five thousand one hundred and eleven total graded. Two hundred eighty two of them are CGC nine point eight. That's five percent of total graded. Iconic cover. You want this in the nine point eight ideally. You can settle for a nine six, but this book, if it goes crazy, it'll go crazy in a nine point eight. And a seven hundred dollar investment for this book <laughs> might might be a might be a book you want to get. Maybe a little, maybe wait a little bit. If you can actually find one raw in high grade and submit a good night eight, that would be the best bang for your buck. Yeah, it's a great book. Um, I mean, it's a classic cover, classic. Um, I hopefully they don't kill the Taskmaster, but uh, if they don't, yeah, I think it's cool. Get it. Yeah, this is probably my least least excited character I am to see in the movie, but Marvel has the biggest opportunity to fix it. Do I think they'll do it? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. All right, next on the list, we got number two, Captain America, issue number six, 2005, and this is actually on the drop, which is so still so surprising to me. We got... Stephen Epting and Ed Brubaker. Um, this is the first appearance of Bucky Barnes as the Winter Soldier. And uh, for a lot of people, this is like a perfect book. It's just, it's perfect. In a lot of different ways, it's a perfect retcon. Um, it's a perfect story. The movie was amazing. Um, everything about this, everything that has to do with Bucky and the Winter Soldier is pretty, pretty, uh, pretty awesome overall. And, um, yeah, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes was Captain America's sidekick way back in the 40s, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone thought he was dead, and he, and even in the comics, he was dead and gone for like, I don't know how long, like 20, 30 years, or something like that. Longer than that. Yeah, and then shows back up in this comic, and there's like such a cool way that the, you know, the Russian government had him secretly. Uh, training him to be the Winter Soldier to do like Black Ops missions and it's just perfect. It's cool. Really, really cool espionage. And in a lot of ways, the the Captain America movies were some of the best ones they've done so far. Uh, you could probably, arguably with Guardians of the Galaxy, one, mm -hmm. two, and three, I'd say Captain America one, two, and three were probably equally as good, if not maybe better. It's hard mm -hmm. to say. It's hard to say. Definitely uh, Captain America Winter Soldier was an awesome movie and Sebastian Stan killed it as a uh, as Winter Soldier, just did a really good job. And we got to see it. He's, I think he's been in like more Marvel movies than like anybody so far. I mean, with Iron Man, with, with Iron Man coming back, he may get up there. But if you think about it, he's in the very first Captain America movie. Like, it's like, what, the second or third Marvel movie ever. And then he's in like almost all of the Avengers movies later on, like Endgame, uh, Infinity War, as well as like multiple other ones, Civil War. All kinds of stuff. He's been in like a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, he got his uh, own TV show, Falcon Winter Soldier. We kind of touched on that a little bit. It's good. Okay. It's okay. We'll give it that mediocre mediocre thing. So this is the one um, I think hopefully uh, Marvel may have figured this out. I think a lot of people thought that he was going to be the main character of Thunderbolts. That he was going to be the right along the leading character. And I think that would have been a big mistake. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, not that I think Sebastian Stan's a really good actor, although I'm not sure if he should be the main character of anything. Uh, like, not very many projects he's been in where he's the main person. Dude, I think the movies or shows do that well. Mm -hmm. He plays an awesome uh, extra character, co-star. Co plays a really good co-star in, in a lot of things. And it's like I say, he's a fantastic actor, but I don't know if he has, like, the emotional qualities to, like, lead this movie, which that's kind of what it felt like because they show him, it's almost like the team is together in that car, and then they're like, oh my god, Winter Soldier's shooting at me, shooting at us. You know, it's like, oh, it's it's him. So it's like, they're obviously going to be adding him sometime later in to the movie, which hopefully is the right the right way. You know, I think it would be better that way. I, I don't need to, I don't need him to be, like, the, the main character of this movie. We've already seen a lot of him, and I want to see more of him, just not as the, the leading man. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, uh, exactly. 
Be on the lookout. There is a newsstand version of this book, which is like worth three times the amount of value and uh, has one of the best variants that go perfectly with the other one. There is the Bucky cover with the uh, USSR Russian flag in the background, and you almost mm -hmm. kind of need both of those. When you have one, you need the other one. And it's, I think it's slightly more valuable than this one, but... Yeah, I think it's just a little bit. But yeah, not much more. Well, it was red, white, and blue, and everything else a year ago. $179 for a CGC 9.8. Way too cheap. Yeah, don't worry. It gets even cheaper. Uh, uh, he didn't lose just one arm now. He lost both. At $142, you <laughs> can get a 9.8. $119 is the low. $447 is the high, which is crazy. Must be an outlier. Uh, $182 is the average. It's a 21% drop. There's 2,193 total graded. 909 are 9.8 universes. That's 41% total graded. This is a book you want to get, for sure. This is a modern age classic. Winter Soldier, great villain, fantastic. I get it raw, get it in high grade, send in, get a 9.8. Again, signature, perfect for this book. It will make the value stay high, and if the book goes crazy in another 20, 30 years, again, it's gonna be even worth even more. I, 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 here's a question for you. What would you rather have, the person that did the artwork and the you know the writer, or would you rather have the actor sign this book? It's hard to say. I don't know. It could be either way. Like a Brubaker signature would be really cool. Be cool on this one. I Sebastian Stan would be a cool signature. Oh, too. that'd be cool. He's yeah. a really good character. Really cool. I yeah. would think a signature on that because then for his signature, the actor's signature, because then not only would you be getting the comic book uh, fan into it but you also get the people that collect signatures yeah it's also cost you like probably five hundred dollars yeah that's true yeah that's true. brew baker would be like 10. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah well, all right guys we made it to the number one drop Woo! book in the world of the thunderbolts if that makes sense there's a lot of caveats there if you've been counting down all of the members of the thunderbolts there's only one remaining and it's the only silver age book on the list We've got Avengers issue number 43, the princess's favorite character of all time. Oh, no. <laughs> 1976, John Buscema and Roy Thomas. Amazing cover, too. Really, really good. Perfect kind of cover. First appearance of the Red Guardian, Alexei Shoitakov. That's hard to say. I can't say. I can't pronounce the Russian names that well. Da. Da. Exactly. And in the comic books, he is the long lost husband of. Natasha Romanoff. So in the movie, daddy, comic books, husband, works out. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird. But uh, he's another one of those, it's like, in the comics, is like an okay character. I mean, I'm, when this book came out, people really liked him, but stories were a lot shorter back then. In the Silver Age, usually arcs are like two books, usually one book. One book, you know, if it's lucky, you get a two book arc. So um, he, uh, surprise, spoiler alert, dies in issue 40, uh, 44. So <laughs> He comes out in 43 and dies in the very next issue. Uh, Marvel does make a, a, a way of reusing the character. There's like different versions of Red Guardian, like p other people that take up the mantle. They even find a way later to bring Alexi back as like a different version. I'm not, I haven't really read all the different ways that that's happened. Um, but I don't believe in any of those other fashions. He's been an incredibly popular character. Um, he looks cool. He's obviously like, the Russian Captain America, which is like a fun thing because we already have Captain Britain, so we might as well need like Captain Russia as well. But uh, I think the on-screen version was like way, way better uh, than probably the comic book version, which may have something to do with kind of similar to The White Widow where why this book has gotten so cheap, even though it is like a Silver Age mini grail. So it's like kind of a mini grail, the little shot glass yeah. version of a book. But David Arbor who has just been a massive force of awesomeness to bless us all on the screen. And mm -hmm. I don't know what that dude was doing before he hit 40, but he shows, he like turns the age of 40 and just starts crushing everything. He said he was like sitting on his couch playing video games. So that could be you. And then you could be uh, in a Marvel movie crushing it. All right, now, exactly. let's be famous. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, all kinds of great stuff. Uh, Stranger Things has been great. And he might, ki he's kind of, 
one of the main characters, if not the main character of Stranger. The kids are there, but he's sort of like who who's like solving all the problems and fixing things. So um, just amazing. He definitely made Black Widow along with Yelena as mm -hmm. a good movie. Them two together made that movie awesome. So I'm super excited to see them back together again, which is oh, yeah. kind of where this movie looks like oh, it was. Yeah. They're going to be the first two to group up and then kind of collect people along the way. So mm -hmm. I could totally watch two hours of them hanging out, shooting the shit, being funny. So I'm excited for that. Um, on that note, uh, yeah, let's just see. Red Guardian, where is it going? All right. Is it going to go nowhere? Is it going anywhere? There is no Bolo on this because back then they only had one version of these books. <laughs> Which was, I think, in my opinion, a little bit better. <laughs> a respectable grade of A book by a year ago, you could get it for a clean, clean, not like his shaven face, probably shaving somewhere else, $405. This is for an 8.5. 8. 8. 8. Okay. There's not that many sold in the higher grades, so I couldn't go off of those. Uh, range, well, look, 405 was the price a year ago for 8.5. Now you can pick it up for even a better deal, right? Because uh, deflation, nothing now. Deflation, now nothing now. But it's no, for football. someone, kind of, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> we talking about football. <laughs> What's he, who's he got to deflate the football? Brady. Brady. That's right. The greatest one of them all. Three hundred and ten dollars. Okay. For a eight point five, very respectable price. Cheap even. Uh, range is two hundred sixty two dollars to four hundred five. $326 is the average, so it tends to sell more towards the $300 range. It's a 23% drop. There's a lot graded. 1,243 total graded for this book. Well, kind of a lot graded. There's one 9.8, and there's 82 8.5. That's still only 7% of total graded. Whoa. Very, very low. I think... I thought this book was just like, hey, if you're going to complete the Avenger run, you eventually have to get this book, but it's kind of low on the list. I would say because the movie, the movie's making this book, that it brings up a little bit higher. Not a hell of a lot, but a little bit. People are going to love this character for a long time, as long as they don't ruin it in the Thunderbolts movie. So to get this in a higher grade copy for the price you can get it now might not be a horrible idea. Might yeah. not be horrible. Yeah. yeah, you might even be able to find a high-grade rod copy out in the wild. Probably not, but that would be cool. Untouched by the human hand. 9.9. .9. Before there was bag and boards. Yeah, yeah. 9.9. 9. So, yeah, I, we'll see. You know, um, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm not going to have too high a hopes for the Thunderbolts movie. It kind of feels like it's the send-off, like the final movie from this three-year weirdness that we had where like Marvel's been good but not that good and everyone kind of understands that they're like I'm not tired of it we're hopefully turning the leaf over and going into this new direction you know like Kane Kang is gone but we still have to kind of finish things out with the Thunderbolts so you know this may be the last hurrah for a lot of these characters especially if they like you know the worlds collide and everything goes away but I hopefully it does really really well and we get to see more of them so um you know I'm exactly. Hoping. I'm hoping. Me too. You know, get some low expectations, but yeah. be surprised. Something could do really, really well with this. And uh, in my experience so far with the Marvel movies, when they have the government be the villain, um, they've been well. I don't know why. Like people just, you know, government seems like a, you know sometimes a good villain to have. And if you have like Valentina Allegra de Fontaine and the good old Thaddeus Ross, which I think we'll mm. see him in this as well, uh, leading the charge now, like the evil Shield or whatever they're going to be in charge of um that's an easy thing to get on board with you know oh, we already absolutely. it's baked right the the villain i think is baked right in to at least be decent so um they have like you know reasons for trying to protect the earth from evil and they're gonna like screw people over to get there and i think it'll work out so that's uh yeah that's all i got yeah. to say about that but uh amazing list guys and if you like hearing these Drop list once a month. You got to do an easy thing. Subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 3K. We'll have an awesome 3K show when we get there. And Princess also loves it when you hit the like button because she had to hold so many books today. And uh, you got anything else, Zach? Yeah, you got to get those games. Those Thunderbolt games. Oh! Every single one. The unlimited games! And until we see you next time, guys, stay safe and remember. Unlimited games. Get, um... Looks like I'm trying to grab boobs. Every single one? <laughs> Who isn't? Exactly.